Good evening and welcome to the Chatham Board of Selectment July 14th, 2020 meeting. This is a remote participation only meeting. Please note this meeting is being recorded and will be available shortly hereafter for scheduled and on-demand viewing on any smartphone or tablet device. If anyone else is recording the meeting, please notify me. Pursuant to, the Gover to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's March 23rd, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the Chatham Board of Selectmen is being conducted via remote participation. Every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in the order. A reminder that persons who would like to listen to this meeting while in progress may do so by calling the phone number 1-508-945-4410, conference ID 134-208-476-POUND, or join the meeting online via Microsoft Teams through the link in the posted agenda. Despite our best efforts, we may not be able to provide real-time access, and we will post a record of this meeting on the town's website as soon as possible. And I want to welcome everybody and ask that if you are uh, to um, mute your microphones and your videos until the appropriate time when you may be um, called on or would like to make um, um, a public announcement or agenda item request. So right now, I'll take a roll call of the Board of Selectmen. Um, so, uh, Selectman Kokolis. Present. Uh, Selectman Metters. Uh, present. Uh, Selectman Nicastro. Present. Selectman Dinkins. Um, 2020, do I have a motion to accept the first date, June 15, 2020 uh, meeting minutes? Uh, Madam Chair, this is uh, Peter. I move that we accept the June 15, 2020 minutes. Do we have a second? Second. Are there any uh, edits or additions? Okay, none. I will take a, a roll vote. Uh, Selectman Kokolis. Aye. Selectman Matters. Aye. Selectman Dinkins. Aye. Selectman Nicastro. Aye. And the chair says aye. Okay, the meeting minutes have been approved. Our second meeting minutes are June 30th, 2020. Um, and do we have a motion to approve those meeting minutes? So moved. So moved. Okay, well, everybody chimed in. I think it was Dean. Uh, Corey, you want to second that? <laughs> I'll second that. Okay, great. I'll second that. Okay, great. Thanks. All right, any additions or edits to the um, meeting minutes? No. None. Okay, we'll take a, another vote to approve those. Uh, Selectman Kokolis. Aye. Selectman Matters. Aye. Selectman Dinkins. Aye. Selectman Nicastro. Aye. Um, and the chair says aye. Okay, those have been approved. Uh, so tonight um, we have a fairly full agenda, um, but first we need to go to the public announcements and agenda item requests. I'm, I'm going to speak to a matter that happened today uh, that I was made aware of uh, early last night. Um, over the last few days, a racist group has peppered downtown signs and telephone poles with promotional stickers. And we've had, as a country, our share of hate rhetoric lately. We have not made any official statements as a board of selectmen uh, about George Floyd or any other social injustices that have happened or occurred recently. And we may choose to do so then at some time. However, I do want to say in response to the stickers, any promotion of a group that spreads propaganda that vilifies or de de demonizes African Americans, Latinos, Muslims, Jews, LGBT people, and any other persons is incendiary and has no place in the heart of this community. Chatham is a place that respects and supports all walks of life, promotes diversity, and love over hate for one another. Um, so saying, uh, saying that, I would like to ask my fellow board members if they have any meeting, uh, public announcements or agenda item requests. Um, Peter, yes. Uh, hey, Madam Chair, just a, a comment. Cape Light Compact is uh, op beginning to open up a little bit more. They will be able, we think, in the next uh, week or so to be doing home um, uh, audits. If you're thinking about doing it, the uh, wait is about two to three weeks only. So if you're thinking about it, uh, everyone will be masked up. They'll be taking all the precautions that are required. Uh, you might want to consider it. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Any other agenda? Uh, Jeff? 
Yeah, I just uh, an accounting or a closure on the fish pier uh, observation deck. I think uh, a report out. It may not be done, but I just want to put a placeholder on the agenda for a, a future item. Okay. Any others? Okay, I do, uh, as a matter um, of, of say congratulations to the parade committee and Channel 18 for their work on the virtual 4th of July parade. We haven't met since then. It seems like, uh, right. I was, yeah, I was, well, I was wondering if Corey might bring it up, but it <laughs> seems like we're on a time lapse here. But I just wanted to say congratulations and, and a job well done by all who participated in that project, including the community. Peter. Uh, yeah, uh, just on that point, you brought up something. Um, my uh, my family mostly is in Northern Virginia, outside of D.C. We made the D.C. Uh, TV on at least a couple of channels down there with a virtual parade. Wow, that's exciting. Very nice. Okay, um, seeing no other comments or agenda item requests from the board, I'll I'll ask the remote participants uh, to roll call their. Um, uh, wish to speak. Is there anybody in the remote participants that would like to speak? Any staff or any of the general public? Okay, hearing none, we're going to move on to uh, what is our usual fare for first up in new business, and that is coronavirus COVID-19 update. We'll have two tonight, one from the Director of Natural Resources, Dr. Robert Duncanson, and one from our Town Manager, Jill Goldsmith. So, uh, Dr. Duncanson. Good evening, Madam Chair, and thank you. Um, so just quickly tonight, um, running through the numbers, and then I have a couple of other updates for you. Um, right now, worldwide, we are over 13,200,000 cases um, and 570,000 deaths on a worldwide basis. In the U.S., we have 3.4 million cases, a little bit over that, um, and 136,000 deaths. So again, the U.S. continues to lead the world, unfortunately, and we continue to trend at about 25% or so of the worldwide cases and deaths. Um, in Massachusetts, as of 4 p.m. this afternoon, we had 112,000 uh, 130 cases, and we had 8,340 deaths in Massachusetts. For Barnstable County, we are at 1,586 cases, and we are now at 152 deaths, which is an increase of one uh, over yesterday. And we had hovered around that 150, 151 cases um, for the last several days, so that was very good news. Uh, there's been no substantial increase in the Cape overall. Um, in Chatham, we had one, one additional case come in uh, over the weekend. So we're now at 22 cases, and we're still holding very good at our one known death of a Chatham resident. Um, as I've indicated previously, while we have 22 confirmed cases in Chatham, those stretch all the way back to the beginning of the pandemic last March. Um, and so the vast majority of those have now cleared. So we basically are only tracking at the moment one or two active cases, um, if you will. Um, just a couple of other things that I wanted to update the board and the public on. Starting yesterday, we transitioned our food and medication delivery service, which we had been running out of the emergency operations center with the help of our CERT volunteers. Uh, yesterday, we transitioned that over to the Council on Aging. Um, so we are now using the Council on Aging buses, which have been retrofitted um, to provide COVID-19 protections for the drivers. Um, but they have now been trained. We ran a kind of a, a training session yesterday with some of the CERT coordinators and the COA drivers and actually ran them through two actual pickups of food and delivery yesterday. So they're aware of the protocol uh, at Chatham Village Market and also aware of the protocols when deliveries are made to the individual residents. So going forward, we'll continue to manage that out of the Emergency Operations Center, um, at least for the rest of July, but the actual pickups and deliveries are now being uh, run, out, uh, run by the COA 
uh, bus drivers. So that's that's good news. We made that transition primarily because as things reopen and people go back to work, our supply of uh, CERT volunteers was getting thin, um, and we thought it would be a good use to get some of our uh, our COA drivers and buses uh, back on the road. So that went very well yesterday, and we're going to continue to do that. Uh, tomorrow at the COA, we do have one of our point of distribution food program uh, giveaways, um, and that is also being assisted by some of our CERT volunteers, although it's not as many um, as we've been able to muster in the past, but they are still providing us uh, with that service and will be going forward um, as they're able to. A um, couple of other items that are on the Board of Health agenda for Monday, next Monday. Uh, the Board of Health is going to be reviewing the hours that their mask order takes place. Right now, their mask order is in effect from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. We've recently got feedback from uh, the Chamber as well as one of the businesses on Main Street that because we're now more in the height of the summer season and, and things on Main Street are open a little bit later, uh, they had some question as to whether or not the Board would consider expanding the mask order to 10 p.m. So the board will be discussing that on Monday. Uh, one of the other things on the Board of House agenda for Monday's discussion is Schoolhouse Pond. Uh, we continue to have a number of uh, regular complaints registered regarding Schoolhouse Pond and overcrowding and lack of social distancing and whatnot. Um, so the Board of Health is going to review that on Monday and maybe making a recommendation back to you um, for subsequent consideration uh, regarding especially parking on Sam Ryder Road, uh, because that really seems to be one of the critical issues uh, leading to the schoolhouse pond situation. Not so much uh, people parking in the parking lot, because as you know, parking is restricted to town residents only, but there's no restrictions on the Sam Ryder Road parking. And so it appears we have A, a lot of people parking along the road and walking in, as well as a lot of people just dropping people off um, and then walking in subsequently to do that. So uh, the board's gonna discuss that and you may see a recommendation forthcoming. And I spoke with Dan Tobin today from Park and Rec. Uh, the Park and Rec Commission is meeting next Tuesday and they will also be discussing it as well. So that will be coming up. Um, and then the final thing I wanted to update the board on is we have now um, have our um, COVID-19 monitor, inspector, whatever you want to call it, um, in place. The Barnstable County uh, Health Department hired a number of individuals to provide, to provide towns on the Cape some additional assistance in dealing with COVID-19. Uh, we have a lady assigned to us uh, right now, it looks like two days a week on Friday and Sundays uh, for approximately a four-hour stretch each day. Um, and we're going to use that person to kind of be a mask ambassador, if you will, um, primarily on Main Street, but more targeted towards Lighthouse Overlook and Stairs. Um, so far, the compliance with the mask order on Main Street and at the Fish Pier Observation Deck has been very good. Um, pretty much every time I've driven through and visited those locations during the, you know, the peak of the day, if you will, um, mass compliance has been better than I'd say 95%. Uh, you know, obviously at the beginning of the day and the end of the day may not be as good, but during the, the critical period when it's really crowded, uh, mass compliance has been very good. We have not had as good compliance at the Lighthouse Overlook. Um, as I mentioned before, we relocated one of the message boards down there to kind of get that word out. Uh, DPW is working on some metal signs for us because our, our paper signs don't hold up as well at the Lighthouse Overlook. Uh, but we think a lot of it is just people are there. They're there for a relatively short period of time. Um, you know, they get right out of their car, they go, they look, and they're not aware necessarily of the, uh, the mask requirement. So we're going to have our mask ambassador spend some time down there um, just to try to reinforce that um, for that area. Um, so with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Shereen, you're muted. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you, Bob. That was uh, a good um, good report. Uh, any questions from the board? None. Uh, Dean, yes. 
Go right ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Bob, um, how is the social distancing uh, taken place at the Fish Pier deck? I, I have not walked it since it opened. I've driven by there a few times. Um, you can't see too much from the street except either end. Those ends have not looked overly crowded to me. Uh, do we have anybody down there monitoring it? or uh, how, what, what, are the, what reports are you getting about that? Yeah, we don't have anybody down there actively monitoring the social distancing on the deck. Uh, as you can imagine, it, it does get crowded at times, depending on where the seals are. Uh, you know, it's kind of like people either rush to one end or the other. Um, today, when I was looking at it from the camera, there was a huge number of seals hauled out on the southwest end of Turn Island. Uh, so the crowd was a little bit more spread out. Uh, you know, because we don't have anybody actively there, we do have signage. We did mark off the railing in six foot increments, um, but it's tough. But I would again say, based on the times that I was down there and also monitoring it by camera, um, you know, at least 95, maybe even higher, maybe towards 100 percent of the people are wearing masks. Um, so, you know, they're technically in compliance with the guidelines because you need to wear a mask if you can't maintain the social distancing. Uh, the board did require that as a mask mandatory zone. So I think from that perspective, um, it's pretty good. You know, the social distancing part is it's much more difficult uh, to manage there unless we were to put somebody down there. Um, but even with somebody down there, it would still be difficult because people move around. They want to try to get the best view of either the seals or the fish offloading operations. So it, it's tough. But as long as people are complying with the mask mandate, I think we're we're doing pretty well. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Okay. Um, Bob, I just have one on the fish pier observation desk. desk. Is the is the um, pier program um, working um, on the deck at all this summer, uh, or did they cancel that? Not that I'm aware of. We had talked with them earlier in the season, and we haven't talked to them recently. But I'll reach out to them. They may have canceled it just because of the the COVID nineteen. Okay. All yeah. Right. But we'll, we'll follow up and I'll let you know, Shereen. Thank you. Um, any other questions from the board? All right. Um, I'll take a roll of any uh, remote participants that would like to ask Dr. Duncanson a question on his presentation or make comment. Anybody else? Okay, Elaine, go right ahead. Yeah. Uh, I have one comment and two questions in terms of monitoring the fish pier. Uh, I think it would be helpful if we're not going to have people down there because it can get very crowded, is to replace that camera, which only takes a snapshot uh, every um, hour at the most, uh, to have an actual camera like it does on Main Street. And then a staff person could simply be monitoring. It's, it's very helpful to see the people walking by and whether or not they're wearing masks so that it can be enforced. And then you'll know if you have to do something. In terms of my two questions, one is, uh, because of all the tourists and the fact that nobody's quarantining anymore from the six states, surrounding states, if someone from one of those states gets COVID, where are they counted? Are they counted in, in Massachusetts and Cape Cod, or are they counted from New Jersey or Connecticut, wherever they're from? Bob, can you answer that? Yeah, um, well, I thought Elaine said she had two questions, oh, so I was okay, waiting sorry. for the second one. Uh, well, let me, address, let me address her first comment. Um, we do have a live camera at the fish pier right now. It's for staff only. Um, we're using it primarily to either oh, monitor, okay. well, primarily to monitor the north break for public safety reasons, but we can um, use it to monitor the fish pier live. Um, and I do that, you know, fairly frequently. I'll check in and just see what it looks like, and and that's why I can safely make the statement that the mass compliance there um, has been very good, as well as I make it, try to get down there at least once a day. Um, to see it for myself anyway, and parking and everything else. Uh, with regard to if someone came from out of state and was diagnosed with COVID, um, more than likely it would be reported to their home health department, um, as opposed to us, because they're not a resident, say, of Chatham or of Massachusetts. Uh, we've had two instances of that so far this year. Uh, where the fire department transported people who were later diagnosed at CCH with COVID. Um, and we knew about it strictly because of the address where they were transported from, uh, but we did not receive any follow-up information because it was reported back um, to their home state and their hometown. 
uh, which I guess leads me to the second question in terms of contract uh, contact tracing of people who are here for a short period of time and then go back to their home states. That seems like that would be a problem for us as well, where they, they could have infected people here, but we're not going to know and we're not going to be able to notify them. Is that an, a, an accurate assumption? Uh, if they if they were placed into the contract tracing um, situation in Massachusetts, anybody that they came in contact with, even if they were not, um, you know, if they were in Chatham and they provided that information to the contract tracers, uh, that information would be shared with anybody they came in contact with. You know, as we've said from the very beginning, in terms of contact tracing. The information is only as good as that provided by the individual. So if somebody remembers where they were and who they were in contact uh, with, that information would be accessible. But if they simply said, you know, I don't remember being in Chatham, um, you know, there, there'd be no way to follow up. So, um, as, you know, as we've said from the very beginning, with any contact tracing, whether we do it, VNA does it, or the state's doing it, uh, it, it really is only as good as the information provided by the individual to start with. Okay. Uh, I guess that's something that I think Baker probably should address since we are having an influx of people from the six states and he's allowed that, that there should be some guidance to pe people if they've been here and then they go home and within you know seven to 14 days they get sick, uh, to notify the town, notify someone, the VNA here, uh, that should be part of the process, um, particularly since we're not quarantining, it would seem, so that we could keep track of, you know, where it comes from um, over the next couple months. That's just a thought. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. Hey, Jeff, you had your hand up. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a, a question for, for Jill and others, but uh, how, how are we doing on the beaches, uh, Hardings, Oyster Pond, and, and other beaches? How's social distancing going there? I don't know if anybody's heard anything. I've had some reports that it wasn't too bad down on Hardings, but I was just wondering what you guys have heard. I also had a report of, of some dead seals on Harding. I just want folks, folks to know there were dead seals down there. Thanks. So I haven't received any complaints or, or any notices from uh, Park and Rec and the Beach Department. I think, though, it was a slow beach weekend, except for, I believe it was Sunday. Okay. And yeah. um, we... We have hired beach monitors to assist the gate attendants, and we're still looking for a few more. But I, I haven't seen any pictures of, of any um, crowding or crowdings in certain areas. I'm not sure, if Bob, if you've seen anything. Yeah, as I mentioned maybe um, two weeks ago, we had taken some aerial photographs primarily for the um, Stage Harbor Entrance Channel work, but they did capture um, Harding's Beach. And social distancing at that point was, was going very well. Um, people were being responsible. So we haven't had, the only place we've had complaints about, honestly, is Schoolhouse Pond. Right, okay, thank you, yeah. I, I, did, I did swing by the fish pier on my boat and virtually 100% of the people on the observation deck had masks on, 100%. Yeah. So it's very, very good compliance. Well, you know, that, that's, a, that's an N of one, you know, but it was, it was good. It was All set, Jeff? Okay. Uh, any other uh, uh, questions for Dr. Duncanson from the remote participants or from the board? Okay, thank you, Bob. That All was, right, thank, thank you. you very much. Um, so our next report is from the town manager, Jill. Thank you, Madam Chairman. So we're still continuing with our twice a week COVID response meetings with all of the department heads. And on Friday, it's broadened out to the chairman of the Board of Selectmen, Board of Health, Broad Reach, as well as the school superintendent. So uh, we're continuing on our planning efforts. Uh, as you've probably read, what's gonna happen in the fall for schools is, is a great priority for the school superintendent. And us working on our re-entry plans for employees to come back with the workplace modifications underway. So I have shared a training video with, the, with a Superintendent Carpenter uh, about how to don and doff uh, protective, uh, personal protective equipment and so forth, including uh, our component that we had on uh, de-escalation and some handy tips on uh, appropriate phrases to use to uh, calm or assist somebody. Um, so with that, we're, we're starting our getting back to business. And with that, we're also looking at lessons learned. So we're compiling a list, what we call a hot wash item, of things that we uh, could do better for maybe a couple of months from now, 
or just in general. And so we're looking at, that, looking at our, our personal protective equipment inventory, how that was dispersed, what equipment we needed, the workplace modifications, and then overall employee you know, emotional health and having them ready to return to work. So we're still working to target uh, opening, reopening to the public in uh, late later this month, hopefully July 27th, once we get everything in place. And um, employees are, are, are getting used to the new normal, but having the public come in uh, is still another unknown component to us. So I'm hoping at the next meeting that we could talk about exactly um, how we're going to handle the public coming in versus if it's by appointment or if it's certain hours. Uh, but again, I haven't heard any complaints. And if you have, please let me know. It seems that the public's been served and members, public, members of the public that I've seen come to uh, town hall just as I was walking by or heard someone um, knock on the door, they're not necessarily looking for town services, they're looking for some direction. So I think it's working now. And um, again, we're still hiring for seasonal positions. So if, if there's anyone who, who would like to get out of the house or, or have a family member get out, feel free to apply. Uh, we're hiring pretty quickly. So we have a good system of interviewing and checking backgrounds. And uh, that concludes my report if you have any other questions. Thank you, Jill. Mm -hmm. uh, any questions from the board? Uh, any, any questions from the remote participants, staff or, or um, the general public? Okay, Jill, thank you very much. Okay, we're going to move on to the consider fiscal year end transfers for fiscal year 2020, uh, Mass General Law Ch Chapter 44, Section 33B. We have Finance Director Hailela here. Welcome, Alex. You have um, you have some stuff for us. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, um, I provided an updated memo um, yesterday um, to the board. Uh, we had left out um, the 70,000 that was on the top of one page for the transfer. And as we work through the year-end transfers, we're processing the, what's known as the cleanup warrant, which will be processed tomorrow when people keep on finding invoices and giving them to this. So we're, we're going through to make sure that we have all the um, accounts covered so we can make the transfer so we don't have any deficits. So um, what I'm going to report tonight is that we're asking to transfer uh, $251,000 from the health insurance budget to the following budget categories, um, specifically $16,000 to the insurance budget um, or the flood insurance, which came in higher than was budgeted. Um, and then the remainder to uh, the Department of Public Works, $235,000 broken down to um, $165,000 to the buildings and facilities budget and $70,000 to the transfer station budget for both um, salaries and expenses as listed on page three of your memo. So this has no impact on the tax rate. This is taking existing funds from one budget to the other um, to balance out the, um, the account at the year end. Um, health insurance, has savings in this account. Again, I think it's due mostly to the um, increase in the employees' contributions. And for FY 2021, we reduced this line item by 150,000, so we don't expect to see this type of savings in the health insurance next year. If we do, um, it, we'll sure. again review it for FY 22 going forward. Um, I did list some of the reasons why these were overdrawn. And again, we had um, even with the tornado and the COVID-19, we've had other funds coming in, but um, there was a lot of things that weren't able to be charged um, to those accounts. So I'm happy to, oh, and also the Finance Committee met yesterday and approved the budget transfers by a vote of 7-0-0. So I'm happy to answer any questions you might have on the specifics of these. Thank you very much, Alex. I see Dean's waving his hand, Dean. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Alex. Um, just a question regarding the buildings and facilities. The memo um, description says that the utility costs were more expensive than budgeted. Um, is there an explanation for that, why the budgeting was uh, less? Uh, is it, was it related to the tornado or is it? No, that actually, um, and you might recall during the budget process, uh, we increased the utilities budget under the facilities um, because we had we used to have that offset from the solar 
credits that were a direct um, reduction in our bills. Now we're getting the revenue checks in, so that has to go to the re revenue side of the ledger. So we increased those expenses um, for FY 2022, so you will not see that. But I, I'm looking back to the fiscal year we're closing out, and I'm trying to understand the statement that the um, costs were more expensive than they, than they were budgeted. Did we under budget? We, we did, because again, those um, solar credits that we get weren't, but um, we accounted for those in the expenditure budget rather than accounting those in the revenue budget. And for FY 2022, when we went through the budget, we increased our estimated revenues for those solar PV credits that go now into the revenue side. And we increased the expenditure budget to, to as a, the offset, the direct offset for that. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Peter, I see your hands up as well. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, Alex, yeah, and to follow up on that, and I should know, because it, it bothers me that uh, I understand the, how the, the credits, the energy credits are, are work. We used to be able to con consider all of that as a, as a savings to the town. Now it's kind of a, a neutral because what we save is what we have to put in for revenue. Am I simplifying it too much or is that? It's, you know, it's I, I, I have a hard time explaining that to other people. Okay, I, I think we, we still are saving money um, yeah. through the solar PV. Um, we are saving those. However, previously we used to get the offset directly on the bill. So instead of being billed, you know, hundred dollars we were billed fifty dollars now we're being billed a hundred dollars and we're getting a check for fifty dollars or so you know the the fifty dollar offset is is coming in different yeah yeah i understand all right so, so that's that okay. uh, Jeff. yeah i uh i move to uh, that we approve the transfer of two hundred fifty one thousand dollars from benefits budget and transfer sixteen thousand dollars to the insurance budget and $165,000 to facilities and $70,000 to the transfer station Department of Public Works budget. Second. I do I second? Who seconds that? I'm sorry. Peter did. Peter did? Okay. All right. Any further discussion from the board? Any um, questions from the remote participants? All right. Hearing none, I'll take a vote. Um, Selectman Kokolis. Aye. Selectman Matters. Aye. Selectman Dinkins? Aye. Selectman Nicastro? Aye. And the chair says aye. All right, thank you, Alex. Thank you. All right, our next order of business is a public hearing to change of manager to the annual all alcohol beverage restaurant license for the Chatham Squire. Um, we need the clerk to read the town, um, the public hearing notice. Uh, it does indicate that the clerk is Dean Nicastro, but we did vote a new clerk um, at our reorganization a few weeks ago. So I'm going to ask Corey, uh, Corey Metters to please uh, read the public notice. All right, got it. Notice is hereby given that the Chatham Board of Selectmen will remotely hold a public hearing on Tuesday, July 14th, 2020 at 6 p.m. to consider a request for change of manager to the annual restaurant license for all alcoholic beverages for One Drop Operating LLC, DBA, Chatham Squire, 487 Main Street, Chatham Mass, 02633, from Richard Sullivan to Robert Barney. All interested parties are encouraged to participate via link or call-in number listed in posted meeting agenda. Signed, the Board of Selectmen. Thank you, Corey. Um, Shauna, are, is there any comments or, or report that you would like to make? And I want to know if the representatives from um, the Chatham Squire were on the call. Sure. Um, when this was circulated to department heads, there were no um, comments or concerns about the transfer. And I believe Todd Hurl is on the call. Okay. Yep, I'm on. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Um, welcome, Todd. Um, so just a change of manage, uh, manager and all the paperwork is in place, according to Shauna. Um, is there any comments or anything you'd like to make or should we just move on to the board making comments um no i mean I, you know uh richard is moving on and and uh, and bob barney is going to be you know the act the new acting gm um and you know bob's served as you know 
someone in many roles at the Squire over the past 20 some odd years and, um, you know, keeps the building safe and is, is now, uh, you know, a new acting GM. But that's, that's about, that's about it. Okay. Thank you. Any questions from uh, the Board of Selectmen for Mr. Hurl? Would somebody like to make a motion? And... Uh, Madam, Madam Chair. Chair. Yes, go ahead. Um, I'm sorry, Peter, to interrupt you. Go. This is a public hearing, so I'm not sure if we you want to hear. Yeah, hear first from the public. Okay. Is there any uh, remote participants that would like to speak on this matter? Okay, hearing none, um, a motion from from the board. Peter. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, move to approve change of manager to the annual restaurant license for all alcoholic beverages for One Drop Operating LLC doing business as Chatham Squire, 487 Main Street, Chatham, Mass, 02633 from Richard Sullivan to Robert Varney. Second. Okay. Second, all right, great. Any further discussion from the board? Any further discussion or comments from the remote participants? Hearing none, I'll take a vote uh, from the board. Um, Peter. Aye. Corey. Aye. Uh, Jeff. Aye. Dean. Aye. And the chair says aye. Okay, Mr. Hurl, your change of uh, manager on the license is all set. Thank you very much. Great, thank you very much. You have a good evening. Okay, our Thanks. next our next order of business is special town meeting Saturday slated for Saturday, September 19, 2020 at 4 p.m. Our items we're going to discuss is the discussion date and location, review of warrant articles previously removed, postponed or new, and consider calling a special town election for any debt exclusion funding ballot questions. And I guess this is Jill. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. So when the Board of Selectmen had set a special town meeting date for September 19th, they also had reduced the number of articles on the warrant for um, efficiency and for public safety under our COVID-19 protocols. Well, we had a very successful town meeting on June 22nd, and um, it's time to now consider what the board would like to do moving forward. I think that we all knew that we'd probably be under COVID-19 safety protocols for the September meeting, uh, but shortly after the June 22nd meeting, it came to our attention that that date on September 19th it is a day of ob observance as a Jewish holiday, and we had uh, scheduled that meeting for Saturday, September 19th at 4 p.m. So uh, the, the board, I guess through this discussion, can talk about uh, confirming that you do want to have a special town meeting, and if so, if you would consider uh, another date for that. And um, some, some information that I have in here relates to, depending on what articles you have on the warrant and how they're funded, which would provide the best date to hold a special town meeting. So for any items, and you have a scorecard, and I'm sure we'll go, out, go over that after this, but uh, for items that are funded through the tax rate, we actually have to have town meeting uh, occur before the tax rate is set by you as a board and for tax bills to go out and they usually go out the first week in October. October 1st is always a deadline. The other side of it too is that for any items funded by free cash, free cash has to be certified before we can utilize those funds. And right now Alex and the finance team are closing out our current fiscal year and they'll send our free cash certification to the Department of Revenue for certification, likely mid-August. But once free cash is certified, there's really no deadline for it to be used if you want to use it uh, to fund any article. So um, that also is included in the report. And then um, for the articles requiring a ballot question, uh, that would be on a, either a special election or if the board wanted to approve having are having questions on the presidential election ballot in November, we would have to request that from the Secretary of State, and that request has to be in to them by August 5th, so no later than that. So a lot of uh, deadlines with um, items in between to discuss, and I'm happy to answer any questions or go over this in, in any more detail for you. Okay, Corey has his hand up, so I'll let Corey go first, and then Peter. Corey? Uh, no, I'm just going to make a general 
okay, more of a general statement because we're going to have to have a lot of details to hash out on this. But I guess I am still in favor of having a special town meeting. You know, in the fall, you know, we can pick a new date. That's perfectly fine. Um, and I guess I'm, I'm, I'm thinking in general terms, I, I think we could almost do a very scaled back, even more scaled back meeting and see if some of these items can we can we can maybe move forward to um, or a, a May town meeting and, and, and you know, an annual town meeting. So I just want to kind of have that kind of discussion to see if, um, you know, under this, the COVID-19 pandemic and everything else, uh, some of these things just may not be viable uh, tackling in the fall. So I'd like to kind of maybe scale scale something back, but I'm still in favor of having a special town meeting. Peter, you had your hand. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I'm I'm taking the opposite view to Corey, but with the same caveats about asking questions about what's happening. My I'm leaning towards towards uh, given what I know now that that I I don't I don't think we really need a, a special town meeting. I have built four questions I have later that'll come up. Uh, I think we ought to stay with the budget we approved. It was uh, pretty well streamlined and postpone the warrants and, and any of the other things that we were going to do before. Uh, COVID-19 is going to be with us for a considerable amount of time. Phase four doesn't come out until, um, you know, until we have a vaccine. Uh, I don't see the uncertainty that we have with our budget. It's only a month uh, uh, away and the uncertainty that we have with the budget revenues and the costs and associated are still uncertain. And those are uncertain issues. I believe that, you know, um, uh, as I talked to Jill and, and also a little bit with Alex previously, but I think she mentioned at one time that, you know, we're, we can look at 2021 and we're, we, we may feel comfortable, but the, the problem is gonna, may, may be even worse in 2022 for a number of reasons. Be the unknown unknowns. I hate to say that, but that's what we used to use. Um, uh, I believe we need to maintain our free cash levels uh, consistent with the with the unknowns and the risks that we have. Uh, that's that's a somewhat of a subjective number, but uh, you know the, where we are with a with a with a uh, in a COVID emergency, not knowing where we are, we have to I believe be conservative in our financial management. And financial management doesn't mean just one year. Financial management means that being able to support what we're going to do over the next couple of years, not just from funding of of, of, uh, of uh, capital projects, but you know how, how do people play in this? How does the infrastructure work with this? And how do we work with, with um, you know, our coastal resiliency? Those are all priorities and we're gonna have to be very critical on how we use them. That doesn't mean you forget them or you stop them. It means that we have to we maintain them. If we want a town that's going to be year round and what we were leaning to and what the board was going towards in, uh, in before COVID to have a 365 initiative to, and bring in jobs along with maybe a university or something like that. And those things, I, I don't believe we want to change. If we do, then all we become is I'll use, I'll steal from my colleague, Mr. Nicastro, becoming a museum. Um, so specifically, here's here's a couple of, a number of questions that I was I was thinking about, even though I leaned in this direction. Take the COA, uh, COA, 16 tanks. My opinion, COA, half the population are, are, are seniors. It is a priority. Yes, nobody's going to anything right now. But a building's not going to be built for another two or three years. Putting this up now, in my opinion, is the wrong thing to do. You wouldn't want to have, you know, go for an eight million dollar project because nothing has changed from the last month or so. However, I did ask uh, Jill. This will be a question. I'll go through my four questions first, and 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 I, I sent around to the to the chair. What if we were able to just get a bid package? I don't go out for bids, but put all the all the money that we need into a bid package. And does that make sense? And it only makes sense if you can do it at something that's reasonable. Five hundred thousand or six hundred thousand dollars or four hundred and some odd thousand dollars to me is not reasonable to do now. Uh, but you know, so I get that. wastewater, the wastewater status. What uh, when we talk about our wastewater and what we need to do? Um, what's the impact if we delay that? If, like I said, if we delay that wastewater, how do, how does it affect? physical properties around it? How does it affect the infrastructure that we have? 
how does it affect getting the money that we need in, a, in the package you mentioned you know we have a two percent loan bond issue or something yeah, to that effect but but could we still get that if we wait and is there any you know negative impact for waiting uh is there any reason we have to do any of the cpa i looked through them i don't think so but somebody may have a, a, a better idea the cba funding can you delay that for a year and then finally which you know all, all my friends in the library are going to probably think go go to extreme but take this at its value landscaping um that we said we wanted to do the balance between the landscaping and fixing the building i think was a good choice by everyone in 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 june and i don't think anything has changed since then landscaping issue hasn't been solved i think unless somebody has real problems with it, I to delay that so that's kind of my position thank you Jill, did you want to speak to any of that now or, or wait? Well, I was thinking about going through, I was thinking about going through the scorecard so all the board members can weigh in. And then um, also we might want to uh, add an item to next week's agenda if you want to get into any further details about the ballot questions. But I, I certainly appreciate those comments. And I think that that those are exactly what the board needs to consider to move forward with the special town meeting. When you look at the matrix, there's a couple items that I wrote and noted to hold on that. And um, and I think it's important that we have Alex and Dr. Bob weigh in on the stormwater uh, item. So I just for that clarification, um, I had noted that it was a reduction from the 4.5 million. Uh, but it's actually that number of 3,311,000 was just the amount for the SRF funding, which is the, the sewer relief fund, which is the 2%. So that's something we need to consider. If, if we still have to bond a portion of that, could we possibly get a better rate than 2%? And we, sa we saw that with a recent uh, bond uh, bid that we had out for the waterfront infrastructure funding. So again, there's a lot of questions to ask and, and however you want to organize it, Madam Chair, I'm happy to go through um, the scorecard too. And, and on the scorecard, and that was posted to the website as well, I listed the articles um, alphabetically in a way, A through Z. It's not the order that we're looking for for placement on the warrant, but I wanted you to have a reference. So if you wanted to call a certain article out on the scorecard, we can all know where to look on the paper. Okay, well, we can proceed in that direction if you want. I know Corey had his hand up. Um, if, Corey, if you want to speak okay. and then. No, I, I just, another general question is the mechanics on the um, petition articles, because we did make a, a commitment that we would bring them to the next town meeting i guess that being a special or annual um so i you know i'd like to see i must be clear of the mechanics that we're, we're following through of what we said we were going to do um and if and if there's any specific articles the, the one that's kind of jumping out at me a little bit is because it does have a big uh, impact on the town um and i and i don't know if there's any timing issues and i'm you know well one will we'll assume that we'll reach out to the petitioners on some of this stuff but on the uh, Main Street Theater Overlay District, um, I would like to reach out to th those individuals to see if a delay uh, would or would not impact them. Um, I'm, I'm sure that's a big project, and I'd hate to have something stumble, um, you know, delaying it, stumbling in a negative impact on that project. Um, so I'd like to make, make sure we reach out to all these petitioners to see exactly where they, they stand on some of these things. So, uh, I, I mean, when I say uh, um, um, strip down basic special town meeting. I'm talking on one hand article uh, because I, I frankly think most of this stuff is going to wait until May. So um, this is probably, I'm assuming we're, we're not going to make any hard decisions tonight, but we're just going to get a general feel for what we might be, what we might need to um, to do uh, maybe next week or the, or the following week. But thank you. Jill, is that a fair enough timeline for you and, and, and Alex to work through um, if we take a couple of weeks to consider all of this? It's the only thing we're going to need to make a, de a decision on is whether there's going to be ballot questions. Okay. And that, because it would either require a special election or, as I had noted, if we can get them on the November presidential ballot. Um, for the wastewater, I'm sorry, for the stormwater drainage article and uh, ballot question, 
we have right now an expiration of our SRF application as October 18th. And I know Dr. Bob has requested an extension and also noted that it might potentially be on the November ballot and if, if that would uh, cause an issue. So we would need a town meeting to approve the article and then it moves forward to the ballot for that approval. And um, some towns have done it. We haven't had a special election first and then um, take it to town meeting for a vote, which won't be recommended by uh, by town council. But there's also the provision of having an article approved for bonding at an annual town meeting, and it could be then acted upon within 90 days for a special election. So I know there's a lot of moving parts here, but um, the the direction that we we need from you is a whether you want to call a special town meeting and then I need to figure out the logistics for an outdoor event most likely and then uh, some of these funding items that require the ballot question. I'm not seeking any budget adjustments for either the capital or the FY21 operating budget. We have a placeholder in there so I don't want you to think that that's a prevailing factor that we need to replenish those budgets. Those budgets were approved as balanced budgets. Okay, is um, Dean and then Jeff. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I fall somewhere between what Corey has been ar ar arguing for and what Peter has argued for. I, um, when we uh, determined that there would be a special town meeting in September, uh, the thought was that the COVID situation might have by then cleared up somewhat. But if we all look at things now, we're talking about just two months from now, two months plus. And I, I think it's very clear to um, everyone that the circumstances are not gonna be any better. They're possibly going to be worse. Um, and uh, with that in, in, in reference, I, I think we should hold a town meeting only if there are things that, a special town meeting, it's only if there are items that are essential at this time and we can go through the list. I do agree with Corey about, about the theater, the theater uh, district zoning. I think that's really a critical um, project for the town. And um, I do have some concern, perhaps that could be allayed by conversation with the um, owner of the property. I have some concern that if this gets delayed, you know, uh, for six months um, or so, that uh, possibly um, the project, which is a challenging and ambitious project to begin with, uh, could fall by the wayside and we may wind up with a proposal there that's very different from restoring um, uh, a theater operation in this town. Um, I don't know how critical the stormwater project is uh, in terms of funding. Uh, we may have, I don't know when Dr. Duncanson is going to hear back, uh, from the state regarding a postponement of a deadline. As far as the COA is concerned, uh, I think that 1610 Main Street should be deferred until, until the annual town meeting of 2021. Uh, and that would include a ballot question on it. I would point out that we, with respect to the petition articles, um, we did, as Corey said, uh, make a commitment to place all of them, I think there are eight of them, on the warrant for the next annual town meeting. So if we were gonna have a special town meeting in September, which I suspect would now have to be earlier in the month, especially if we're gonna do it outside, which is, which is what I think we probably should do, uh, then we're gonna have to talk with each of the petitioners uh, to see if they really want it on in September or in, in, in May. And that I say that with specific um, uh, implication for the proposal for Stepping Stones Road. I don't know whether the sponsors of that petition, I don't know where they are on it, whether they still support it, whether they want it brought forward or not. I will point out that the Board of Selectmen unanimously voted against that petition article, in, which included a, a request for a ballot question. I suspect the board's position has not changed on that. I know my position has not changed. So as far as ballot questions are concerned, the only one, ones I could see would be um, uh, for um, the, the stormwater proposal and um, with respect to 1610, the COA, but that would be next May. 
So th those are my thoughts on it. I'm open to consideration. Maybe between now and when our, we meet next, we could get a little more information on dates and um, the position, uh, respectively, positions respectively of the sponsors of the various uh, questions. If, if, the, if, for example, Mr. Clark, who is the um, owner of the theater property, were to say, no, I don't mind, it, it, this can wait till May, then that would, that would mean something. But I, I do agree with Corey. I think it's a really um, good um, project for the town. It's met with a lot of support from various boards. And, uh, you know, I, I would hate to see that die <laughs> because of uh, scheduling. So um, uh, uh, the, the director of community development, Katie Donovan's on on the call, and I think she may be able to speak to the uh, ZBA amendment um, if if um, if she's she's there. Yes, she is there. Katie. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so, yes, um, just in preparation for the meeting, I did have a quick conversation with Jill just to mention that I would be happy to reach out to the petitioners to see um, where their project stood and if they felt it necessary to move forward um, with a special town meeting. My thought, um, there are um, two petitions that um, may not have an issue with that. One is the uh, increased area for sheds. Um, and that was a petition actually by the Zoning Board of Appeals. It's kind of um, a cleanup um, article, if you will, to kind of clean up the zoning bylaw. Um, and then the other one was a petitioned article to extend a GB1 um, zone line. And that article um, would, was not going to be recommended by the, by the planning board. So I will actually um, be happy to reach out to the petitioners um, and then report back at next week's meeting uh, to the board if if that's um, the direction you'd like me to take. Okay, so I'm get I'm Alex. Uh, no, something just popped up <laughs> on my computer. Yeah, uh, Matt, sorry. <laughs> all right, that's all right. Uh, Jeff's had his hand up for a little while. Jeff. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, no, uh, we are uh, as a town um, in pretty much the exact same relative position that we were in before when we discussed special town meeting that we held at Veterans Field. So I, I don't feel as though a whole lot has changed or anything has changed with respect to our um, approach to COVID and our approach to having a town meeting that uh, is inside and blah, blah, blah. So if we had anything, we'd have to be outside, number one. Number two, I would only have a town meeting with the, taking the same approach that we took prior in our prior town meeting, um, only consider those items those warrant articles that we believe are the most salient and that have to be dealt with. Um, I would like to hear about the capital project, the stormwater wastewater uh, project. I think that's the Coral Road area, I believe. Um, is that critical to be done? And if it is, um, then I suggest that we have a town meeting early in September and we get that on the November ballot. Uh, if that's that's what we can do. Sounds That sounds the easiest way to go or the most facile way to go. Uh, in terms of uh, Council on Aging, uh, whether 1610 and or petition article, I think that gets deferred to an annual town meeting. Um, appetites for spending 8.2 right now probably are nil. Um, and any other capital project that uses free cash, I think is also not prudent um, at present. So I echo a lot of what's been said um, this evening. I would like another week or so to think about it and to hear feedback from uh, uh, Katie and her and her efforts. I, I do think uh, Selectman Matters makes an excellent point about the about the Main Street Theater Overlay District. If that's critical to the development and the timeline for the developer's uh, intent, then I think we need to touch base and make sure we're not messing something up there, you know, um, um, unintentionally, if you will. So those are my thoughts. I, I would do a minimal approach if we have it early in September. Hope for good weather outside. Minimalist approach. Um, if we can get, we, if we don't have to have a special uh, uh, election, uh, get any uh, uh, petition articles that we need on a ballot in November. Those are my thoughts. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Um, Peter. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I, I agree uh, also on the Main Street project. My, my, my agreement is not only for the theater, but the part of that uh, proposal has to do with big A, little A affordable housing. And that is a priority for this town. And that's where a lot of it is needed. So I would agree with that. And it was on my list. I just didn't didn't mention it. Thanks for Corey bringing it up. Okay, thank you. Um, 
so I think that we're all on the same page. I, I haven't really weighed in, um, Dean, I'll just a second. Um, but it looks like the priorities, uh, the questions are pending for, um, and I agree with what's been said, the theater district overlay in the stone water um, uh, capital project. Um, I agree that if we don't have to have a special town meeting, I'd prefer we didn't. I don't think anything has changed. Um, I think we just need to do the bare necessities of whatever needs to be done. So um, I don't hear any other things popping up unless uh, um, unless I'm not hearing exactly within the the punch list here. Uh, but Dean, you had some question. Uh, you had a comment. Well, two comments. I just wanted to to remind Katie that when she communicates with the planning board about the the shed amendment that was unanimously endorsed by the planning board. Um, that, to, that, the, that the board should be informed that the board of selectmen voted unanimously not to recommend approval, as did the finance committee. So those factors should be, those facts should be related back in that communication. Um, my, my second comment was uh, um, that um, uh, notwithstanding everything that we've said about not having a special town meeting, uh, in September, we have had town, special town meetings in the past, uh, focused on one or two items that we thought were of critical uh, uh, timeliness. So uh, that's something that should be balanced into the discussion. But I, I would prefer not to have one. But if if um, we're told that uh, item A or item B is really critical, you know, we can't get an extension on the way, stormwater or uh, the theater project goes away, then we ought to consider doing something in, in September. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any other comments to for Jill? So, Jill, you will be bringing it back to us with some answers next week or the week after, do you think? Next week. So I want to make sure that I bring it back mm -hmm. to the board next week, and I'll have the draft articles for the stormwater debt exclusion there, and then... Um, I guess it's just a matter of if if the board wanted me to put together a draft article for the COA at 1610 uh, related to uh, design and um, construction bids, if you want to uh, phase that project. So that's something that uh, Selectman Coca-Cola said just mentioned. Peter. Yeah, uh, Jill, uh, it's Peter. Uh, if that cost is, is upwards of $400,000, then I'll withdraw it. I mean, it's a good idea, but I don't see us putting that on a ballot if it's four hundred or five hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, it's going to be five hundred and fifty thousand dollars likely for it, and and that would also um, have to take into account uh, potentially new cost estimates too. So, um, so there there is a cost to doing that. But I, I, okay. I withdraw that. No, thank you. Do you? I want to know, oh, just one more thing, oh, Madam Chair, sure. um, the donor for the 1610 property, uh, Main Street, has extended the, he has offered to extend the donation agreement, so that's not set to ex expire, and he's aware that it could be either a, a special town meeting or possibly not until the May 2021 meeting, and he said he was fine with that. Okay, Dean, comment? Both Jill, both Jill's comment and Peter's comment uh, drawing is the idea of doing the design and bid uh, may move my my uh, comment, but um, I just really wanted to say I think with respect to the senior center, it's absolutely advisable, in my opinion, that 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 item be decided at an annual town meeting. I, I think it's not been great. We've had. To, to deal with that issue with two special town meetings uh, during the off season. And um, so I, I, I wouldn't have favored splitting uh, the, the work into phases. Uh, I understand Peter's idea, um, but I wouldn't have favored that. So I think we're, we're, we're looking at an annual town meeting anyway. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dean. Um, do I have any comments from or questions from the remote participants? Yes, Barbara Siegel. Um, anybody else? Okay, Barbara, Hi. go ahead. Gibbs. And then Thank Elaine. You. Barbara, go ahead. Good evening. Uh, I'm Barbara Siegel. 
I'm, I'm speaking tonight as a Chatham resident, not as chair of the Chatham Council and Aging Board. Chatham seniors are eager to come to town meeting and cast their vote for a modern senior center. But because of the public health crisis, seniors today are concerned and will avoid large gatherings. I recommend you delay town meeting consideration of a new senior center until the annual town meeting in May of next year, when hopefully Chatham will be back to normal and seniors are comfortable coming to a town meeting at a safe venue. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, Elaine? Uh, yes, I would echo what Barbara Siegel just said. I, I'm very pleased that the board thinks that it makes sense to postpone it. Uh, the COA until next spring, when we know what the impact financially is and the impact on the health of the community and getting people back to work until we, uh, we shouldn't be considering spending that kind of money until we know what's going on. Uh, so that's it for me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other comments? Jill, are you still there? I'm not seeing you. Yes, I am still there. Okay. Um, do you need anything else from us to move forward? on this? No, I, I think it, as I look at the scorecard, which you, you guys also have, I don't think there's anything that's pressing from the tax rate that would need to be funded. Um, it, frankly, I'm not sure what capital project would be started before May, you know, the repurposing or the, re, I guess, refurbishing of the funding for the library project. So I, I think that could wait as well. You talked about um, Old Comers Road safety improves, improvements um, that would be targeted be funding funding by free cash, and that's about seventy two thousand. I'm I'm not sure if that could wait. So these are some of the I items I can bring before the board again. But I, I think what I'm hearing is that there doesn't appear to be any uh, items that would be funded by the tax rate, and that gives us a little more flexibility. Madam Chair. Yes, go ahead, Dean. The library board is meeting tomorrow, and I suspect this is going to come up. And I just clarify from Jill, um, we did at the, at the annual town meeting vote to approve um, the the roof pro project, right? Yes, including, but including the including the CPA piece to that, right? Yes, but there were some other um, windows replacements and, and other building shell improvements that were deferred. But the items that needed the to be addressed immediately, uh, the roof was funded at this uh, the June 22nd meeting. So that project will go full. Yes, yes, definitely. What's what's being delayed further would be the um, in addition to the other aspects of the envelope that you just mentioned, would be the um, the re uh, reappropriation of funds for the uh, landscape, what they call the landscaping project, from which we borrowed about four hundred and thirty thousand dollars to fund the roof. A town meeting. If I'm making my exactly. Thoughts. So, well, we, we redirected those funds. Uh, the landscape project uh, had not uh, started. There were a couple of issues. And there's also the opportunity with uh, the drainage funding that might come through the stormwater drainage project that might assist with um, funding a portion of the area in front of the library. So, uh, some of that, I think, for timing wise and sequencing, doing the building roof repair was the most efficient first step, and then the landscaping would come afterwards. So I can tell them tomorrow, because I'm the, I'm the your fourth liaison to them, that the roof project is going forward. It's been funded. Um, there are some aspects to the uh, rest of the envelope that are going to be deferred until uh, the annual town meeting, and the um, landscaping as well, uh, which will be deferred, but that also might benefit funding-wise from what, from the um, stormwater if that if that passes. So okay, I just wanted some information for for tomorrow. Sure will be, the trustees will be anxious to know. Thank you. Thank you, Dean. Any other discussion? All right. So we'll wait to hear from you next week. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jill. Okay, our next item uh, is a uh, consider ways to make the Board of Selectmen meetings more efficient. This is a board discussion. 
And um, we have two items we're going to be discussing, which is the Board of Selectmen's policy review and creation of a um, consent calendar agenda, public forum, designate public comment agenda items. And second, we'll be discussing our liaison uh, assignments. So we br this, I brought this up as an agenda item uh, last week or the last time we met um, and give ourselves a chance to sort of look at um, some of the issues that we've been dealing with in, in, um, in, in managing our time. Uh, we're, we've been holding for, until recently, um, been holding up to four hour meetings. And um, I wanted to try to figure out ways that we could streamline our process similar to some of the other towns and how that they are conducting their meeting. Um, and so I asked, um, I asked Shana to put together a couple of things for us to to talk about tonight. And one of them is um, to look at um, if in your packet, you see that there are um, we have some discussions on um, or we have some uh, information on what neighboring towns in our school uh, school district does as far as the public comment um, period as a, a regular agenda item. Um, primarily, most of them are doing it at the beginning of a meeting. Um, and it, it's, it's rather than having everybody weighing in one at a time during our meeting process. This isn't um, any um, attempt to um, not have public comment on our agenda items, but this is, a, is an attempt to um, have subsequent comments in relationship to the agenda items that we can talk about, uh, discuss and deliberate. Uh, the Board of Selectmen, this is our business meeting and um, so I thought that I'd bring this concept forward to you. Um, in doing all that, also um, we put together some information on um, creating a consent calendar to go through items um, similar to what we do at town meeting on some items, something that doesn't want to be discussed, uh, you know, voted on in a package could be taken out and discussed further. Um, the other piece of this obviously would be that we'd have to revise our policy if we were to do this. We started to talk about this back um, a couple of a couple of years ago when we just we were talking in our goals and objectives about doing some streamlining of our process a little bit, and um, it seemed that we we discussed it two years ago with a, not much of an interest. But th this last discussion, we seemed to have a lot a little more interest. So. I just wanted to put it out there to see what your thoughts were. This isn't something, um, you know, if you feel strongly about it, obviously we can go through um, um, some of the questions, but I'm just looking to see if there's any flavor for this. And if so, um, you know, we could put together something that we could vote on either, you know, since this is a board discussion, maybe we vote on it another day or not. But um um, I'm just open to some sort of thoughts on this as we move forward. So, Corey, I see your hands up. Sure. No, thank you. Um, I mean, I'm open to having the conversation of, of trying to streamline things. Um, but if I'm understanding the proposal on the, the change for public comment, maybe something at the beginning of the meeting, um, I'm less supportive of it because, in my opinion, I think public comment during the flow of the discussion of the board of selectmen uh, might be more uh, effective because our the way our dialogue or our debate going back and forth on a discussion item um, will probably influence if, uh, if a citizen does or does not want to weigh in or support our, what we're doing. Um, and, if, and if I'm reading the proposal correct, that they would kind of go in to make a uh, their public comment on a topic on our agenda late, you know, that would be later on our agenda. Um, not knowing which way the board may or may want, want to go. So they could spend some time commenting on something, not say unnecessarily, but not, you know, I, I don't, I actually don't mind our process. I mean, I'm, I'm not a big fan of four hour meetings terribly, um, but, and I'm sure these virtual meetings probably add a little bit of extra time, you know, just, just the way it, it, it is. So um, I'm probably, more, I'm, I'm still comfortable with the process we do have. I mean, um, you know, I, I'm open. I'm open. My ears are open. I, I'm willing to listen to everyone's view on this thing, but uh, I'm a little reluctant to to kind of shift things up um, because I think we could backfire to some level. So, 
Um, but I'm, like I say, I'm all ears, but I, I don't mind the process we have right now. Uh, I just, and, and, and like you said, we're not trying to do anything to stifle, uh, stifle uh, public comment, um, but we're just trying to be more efficient with our everyone's time. So ears, ears, ears are open. Okay. Thank you, Corey. Um, I think Jeff's hand up and then Peter. Jeff. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I, I'm interested in, in exploring this one a little bit. I, I'm very much in favor of a consent agenda. I think that in and of itself will will um, reduce the amount of time we spend on matters that really are are quite perfunctory from, from our approval perspective. We typically do approve them without a whole lot of, of debate or, or really too much input. So I, I am interested in, in a consent agenda, um, a la what we do at, at town meeting. Uh, we've never really done it at the board, and we do have, I think, some items that would fit very nicely into a consent agenda. So I'm interested in that. When I was on the school committee years ago, we did change our lineup and had, um, had a, a public uh, comment at the beginning of the meeting and at the end of the meeting. And it worked very well. Um, the comment at the beginning of the meeting uh, folks would get up and talk about um, items in the past, items on the current agenda, and would weigh in on on items on the current agenda. And then, then again, at the end of the meeting, would comment on items during the during that during that meeting, and would bring up items perhaps for future agenda uh, future agenda items as well. So, I thought it worked very well. Our meetings have been too long. Um, I don't think uh, the virtual meetings have helped, but. Um, you know, four or five hour meeting is just it just it gets to be too much. So I, I'm I'm very interested in striking a balance between uh, our running a business meeting in the public and including the public in that business meeting, but um, making our, our meetings more efficient along the way. So those are my thoughts. Uh, again, I want to strike a balance. Um, the public absolutely should has been will be and should be included in in our meetings. However, I'm, I'm interested in, in doing that a bit more efficiently. Um, not sure we need to have public input after every single agenda item. Those are my thoughts. OK, thank you. Uh, Peter, you had yeah. your hand up and then. Thank, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to start with where where Jeff did. That's what I was going to first, because I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, then agenda items. In a way, we sometimes do that. We put one things together and we decide to, 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 to like when we make an, uh, certain um, uh, nominations and approvals. So I think that makes a lot of sense to be able to do that. On the, um, we haven't talked a little bit about uh, limiting discussion and length on agenda items. I'm not sure how we do that. I mean, right. you know, it, it's, I think we can limit the amount of time that people have to speak. I think that makes some sense in, in some some respects. I'm glad that you brought this whole uh, subject up because we should discuss it, and I think we should discuss it with with uh, and, and and get a little bit of public input later on. But you know, uh, uh, having here's here's I, I look at my initial knee jerk is you know having discussion at the beginning and the end. I can understand that. If you have a public hearing, though, I, I'm, I'm not sure that's the right place to have something ahead of time. You might want to do it during the public hearing. Well, Another, I think we'd have to do it. A, a public yeah. hearing would have to be processed right. that way. So right. So, mm -hmm. and the second second thing is, on some of the some of the stuff that we review, uh, we get briefings and and they show up right in our. They're not in the package ahead of time, so sometimes the public doesn't know what that's going to be. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that's the way things happen. Um, here's, here's my complaint for years, you know, on, on different boards and whatever, uh, we'll, we'll have an issue and we have, we have very passionate people that care about what's going on. And that's good because you can always learn, you surround yourself with everybody that thinks like you, you're in trouble, but, but, but there'll be, they'll, people will get up and say, I, I agree with what the person said. I'm not going to say that, but then they go right ahead. And re re restate what the other person said, and that's okay, except that it takes time, and we've already heard it. Uh, so I'm I'm willing to listen to this. I'm willing to think about having, if you have, and and understanding what Jeff said changed one of my thoughts. I'm thinking having a public comment after the fact is kind of like saying, you know, we decided it, but 
too bad for you. The point is you're 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 allowing something to be said by the public ahead of time. And and I like part of that because it, it is more efficient. But at the same time, I'm sure there are a number of people out there who say, I'd rather do that during during the, the, the time that it's going on. And and how many times in, it, in any of the, 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 the committee meetings that you've been in that things go on, on and on. And maybe we just limit the amount of time that people talk. Just like you would for the the, the comments at the beginning, uh, I'd like to discuss that about the beginning and the end some more because I'm not I'm not against it. I just want to understand how we would do it. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think any kind of recommendations in that would be helpful, Peter. So, um, I'd be interested in that, Dean. You had. Yeah, I would just point out I, I tried to impose a four minute limit yeah. a couple of years ago when I my first meeting as chairman and I got no support from my colleagues on the board. So, um, uh, I think I appreciate you bringing this forward, uh, Shireen, and I also very much appreciate the material that uh, Shauna put together for our consideration. I, I think you have to start from an understanding of what this meeting is. Uh, and as I see it, it's a business meeting of the town's policymaking executive. We all put ourselves forward to run for selectmen. We got ourselves elected selectmen. And this is a meeting in which we discuss, deliberate, listen, and, and make determinations. But it's also a meeting because we're a public body that's undertaken in the, in the context of an open public session. And we know that um, the uh, Attorney General has uh, recommended that we accommodate and welcome public participation. And so I think we have to strike an appropriate balance on that. Um, in the last several years, you know, we've had the opportunity to attend meetings of other boards. Uh, I remember specifically the first time we went to uh, meet with the Orleans Board of Selectmen. And they had a five minute uh, presentation by the uh, chairman he read the protocol, it took him almost five minutes to read it. They allow, as Shauna points out, public comment at the beginning of the meeting, then they go into board only consideration of, um, of the individual agenda items. The school committee uh, has an interesting uh, model, which Jeff mentioned, and which some of us saw at their meetings where you allow comment at the beginning, and comment at the end. So if there's an agenda item that somebody has an interest in, they can speak at the beginning and advise the board uh, of their thoughts on that particular agenda item. They can also come up at the end of the meeting and speak. Um, and they could be critical of the board's determination or lack thereof. So I, I think that format to me provides very adequate opportunity for public participation. I, I think it's really, um, uh, it, it really uh, burdens the process to open up the, each agenda item and each argument or each thought for further um, public comment during the actual deliberations of the Board of Selectmen. So that's, Kind of the direction uh, I would I would like to see us move toward. Um, well, and I would just add, as you said at the uh, opening, Shireen, it, it, we're not going to take any votes tonight. We don't have an actual proposal in front of us. Uh, I think whatever we might um, come up with in terms of some sort of understanding or shared thoughts, maybe we could ask Shana to draft something and maybe it could be run by town council and presented to us for consideration and possible vote with also uh, the opportunity for the public to uh, input into it because it's a, it's a significant revision from what we uh, currently have. And if we did go with the model of, of the Monomore Regional School District, we would certainly, I think, want to incorporate the public announcements and agenda request policy uh, protocols that we already have in place into that practice so that any any citizen could could uh, request an agenda item or make an announcement. Those are my thoughts. 
Okay. Any further thoughts from the board? So what I'm hearing is that um, there's two two different sort of proposals here, um, but I want to hear back from Corey because Corey um, was had a different opinion about the process. So Corey, is there any um, further uh, comments you well, want to make? I, I, I guess I'm, I'm reluctant to, you know, well, my thought process is uh, we have a very engaged uh, public that would, you know, spends their time, does their homework, comes in and, and wants to weigh in and help us uh, with these, with the, with the dialogue and the debates. If we have a section of our meeting where we have public comment at the um, beginning of a meeting, not knowing what, where the board's dialogue is going to go, uh, are we going to be spending more time with comments that may or may not be needed for that conversation? And then if we offer comments at the end of the agenda where we've already made a decision, how constructive is that? So uh, I guess I'm, a, I'm, I'm the opposite opinion of my, my colleagues here. Um, but I think, you know, I, I, if we can just kind of find a way to balance time management of, of, of people, um, um, you know, that everyone gets a chance evenly to, to communicate during the dialogue, during the review, um, I think that is just a better process. And I think we, at the town, Chad has prided ourselves in public engagement. Uh, we've, we, 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 we're, we're not Orleans, we're not Harwich. Um, so like I said, I, I still like the system we have, um, can be, can be fine tuned a little bit. Certainly. Uh, I think, I don't think anyone who was attending our meetings is looking to have a four hour meeting. Um, but I do think we can, um, fine tune them a little bit, but pretty much stay on the same path we, we, we have in place right now. So that, that's, just, that's my position. Okay. Thanks, Corey. So I think my, uh, what I'm hearing is I'm not hearing everybody on board, um, obviously, um, but I am hearing that we are open for a further discussion on this. Um, and so if we put together from what I've heard from everybody, some recommendations for a future agenda, um, we can consider it and have the public weigh in at that time as well. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate that. And we'll, we'll take that matter under consideration again. Okay. So our next, uh, order of business is the Board of Selectmen Boards Commission Committee Liaison and Agreements. And one thing I forgot to mention when we were talking about um, that was slipped into our agenda packets were um, some of the board vacancies. Um, um, so this what I encourage people to go on the website and look at some of the vacancies for some of the committees that we have and uh, to weigh in on that. Um, Peter, did you have a question before I made a presentation? Yeah, one more comment. I meant to send this to Corey already, but the Cable Advisory Committee needs two people now. Okay. okay. All right. We'll, we'll take that under advisement. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, annually, I guess we go through our committee liaisons, and it's usually um, uh, we look at um, each of our obligations and, and whatnot and um, mix and match or, or don't. Um, I do want to make a comment um, a little bit about equity in in the process here. Um, it's we we have a, we have 49 or so committees, but we also have a couple of others that aren't sort of mentioned that some of the boards take on. Um, like Jeff and I both serve on the OPEB trustee meeting. In addition to, um, it was listed that he's on the Monomoy Legislative Advocacy Subcommittee, but I am as well. Um, I also serve as board chair, and then, um, though it wasn't designated um, by the town, I do take other responsibilities as the chair and serve on some regional committees um, and weigh in. So we've got a lot of um, a lot of, uh, of of different committees here, and I I reached out to um, uh, to Selectman Matters to see if he'd be willing to take one of my committees on. Um, um, that I had been working with that I felt that I was had to recuse myself a couple of times and I thought it would be best served if somebody else served on that committee. And that was the Aunt Lydia's Cove committee. Uh, he said he would be willing to consider it if nobody else did. And I really appreciate that. But that leaves him with an extra few, um, uh, another extra uh, committee. So I just want to put it out there to see how people are feeling about their committees. 
where they are, whether they want to make any changes, and um, we'll just do a round the table here. So Jeff had his hand up first. Jeff, you're muted, Jeff. Yeah, sorry. Um, I appreciate those comments, Madam Chair. And, and if uh, Selectman Meadows is looking to uh, lighten his load a little bit, I'll be more than happy to take on the golf advisory and ad hoc shared uh, golf committee. Uh, if that would help at all, Corey, I, seeing as how you're picking up the on Lady as cold committee. Um, I'd certainly make that okay. off. No, I, mean, I like the golf course, guys, but if you if you have an interest in it, I'll you know rotate my time a little bit. And I'd, I'd be open to that. Thank you. I'd be, I'd be fine. I'd be fine with that. Yeah. yeah thank you. Good, good, good group of guys. Yeah. Yeah. Women and women. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Dean. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I, when I saw the list, I saw that my my list of, of committees is shorter than others. I suspect that that may reflect the fact that um, I was liaison to the uh, merchants committee, but that seems to have become uh, moribund, I guess. So I, I reached out to selectmen. Um, um, yesterday and uh, suggested that I'd be happy to take over a committee from him. And we talked about the railroad group. I know they only they don't meet like often. They meet twice a year. Uh, I, I had them at one time and then I think you had them, Shireen, and they mm -hmm. wound up over in his domain. Uh, but I, I'd be willing to take that on or something else just to even up the score here. Because I, I always have Okay, uh, Peter. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't have a problem. The Railroad Museum Group is a super group, um, and they're in the, the midst of getting some maintenance done, and, and I think that, that's going along. I also have Cape Light Compact under me, which you don't, it's not a committee, but oh, up yeah, time. Uh, so I'm, I'm fine with, with uh, that change. And okay, I'm happy with what I have. Also, okay. Um, all right, have we heard from everybody? Is there any other any other changes anybody wants to make, or they want to take anybody else's take something else on from somebody else? No, I'm good. Okay. Well, it, one of the goals that we were trying to do was streamline the waterways stuff. So Corey sort of is doing that. I still have shellfish advisory committee, but it's sort of getting it into your world. It's a bit of a heavy lift to take on all of it, but appreciate that, Corey. And um, it looks like we're in. Uh, I'm I'm okay with the rest of the committees that I have. Um, and Jeff, you're fine with yours. I am. Yes. Yeah, I am. Well, Corey, you're good. No, I'm good. I like I like my groups. Okay. Dean, any other? I'm fine with it. And Peter, you're fine with yours. Yes. Ma okay. Shauna, do you have that? Were you able to follow that? Sorry. Um, can you just <laughs> confirm the railroad museum if it's staying with Peter or moving to Dean? It's moving to Dean. Okay, thank you. Okay. Do you need me to read these off to you or are you okay? No, I've got it. I'm, okay, great. All right, thanks. All right, well, that's, uh, that's good. Um, Appreciate everybody's work with their committees and, and liaisons and uh, whatnot. Um, we can, uh, we'll probably be getting some board report. Well, not really committee reports because committees aren't really have been meeting as much as they have. But uh, I think that's it for us tonight. Is there anybody, any other stuff that we need to talk about? Or are we ready to adjourn the meeting? I don't mean to prolong the meeting, Madam Chair, and this isn't on the agenda, but it is, is relative to committee structure and Yes. Laws, um, if I might, uh, knowing that some of these committees may want to be meeting, I just would maybe on a future agenda and talk about some kind of increased resources so that we can get these folks on Zoom meetings if this COVID thing continues, which it certainly seems as though it's going to. So I think going forward, there's going to be more demand. Po folks are going to want to meet. So I think we, we're going to need more resources to, to, to allow them to do so. Thank you. Uh, Jill popped up. So Jill, do yeah. you have any any? Um, can you? Is there an update to who's been meeting and what's been going on? Uh, or what your I, thoughts I are? Since we last met, it, it's the summer residence committee, summer yeah. residence advisory committee meeting through July. We we're going to do it on a month to month um, basis of a review. So I know that I'm in contact with the staff liaisons, and if there's any any committee that would like to meet, uh, again you've 
pretty much deferred to me and the criteria we've been using is you know what's what's immediate and essential i do know that some of the committees want to get together so that they can reorganize and um, certainly take that under consideration but we were going to get through july and then august I, I think we'll be able to open it up we just have to work on some coordination with channel 18 as well as the it department and training for people on teams i think we're going to be on teams for at least another six weeks or so so um, that's you know sort of a decision point for us that's going to limit some of the activity of the committees okay thanks jill that thanks, was a good jill. A good update thank you jill thank, thank you. you appreciate yeah. the reminder where we were at all right um any other any more uh motion to adjourn motion to adjourn madam chair second second okay let's take a roll uh selectman kakolis aye uh selectman matters Aye. Selectman Dinkins. Aye. Selectman Castro. Aye. And the chair says aye. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, Chatham. Good night. And I want to thank the staff and uh, Jill as well for um, the meeting tonight. Take care, everybody. Have a good week. Yeah.